Waves interfere when they meet. They have an effect on one another. We can show that by diffraction. As you can see here, there's a barrier with two gaps. And as the wave gets to the barrier, two sets of circular waves spread out and interfere one another. They cross over one another. I'll shortly aim to illustrate the interference of light using a similar method. In this demonstration, I'm using two dippers which are hung from a bar and they are vibrating at the same time due to a motor held on the bar which is rapidly spinning. I'm producing the waves this way because I want strong definite waves and I want them to be of about the same size and exactly the same wavelength so I can show an interference pattern. And I think you can see such a pattern here. Going down the screen there are two sets of lines. One set of lines where the waves are prominent and another set of lines just between them where there are hardly any waves at all. Using a still frame, along the red lines the waves are very prominent and then between them, along the green lines, the waves can hardly be seen at all. To help to explain this, I've drawn two sets of overlapping circles. These, I hope, look like two sets of waves overlapping one another. The lines are intended to represent the crests of the waves and the spaces between them represent the troughs. Now this is intended to show the pattern that occurs when two sets of waves spread out and interfere. The places where the crests meet are marked by these orange dots. The gaps between the lines represent the troughs and there are places marked here with blue dots where trough meets trough. These places where crest meets crest and trough meets trough form these straight lines. So along that line, it is on the right hand of your screen, one wave meets another, crest meeting crest and trough meeting trough. Two crests meeting, two lumps of water add together to produce a big crest, and similarly, two troughs add together to produce a large trough. This is called constructive interference, and that's why we can see a large distinct wave in the pattern. Now between these lines of dots, where the green lines on the diagram are being placed, crest meets trough and trough meets crest. The result of this, as shown on the right hand of the screen again, is that the crest falling into the trough fills in the hole in the water and they cancel out. And so along those green lines you have destructive interference, where the crests and troughs cancel each other out. Going back to this image again, you can see this effect. Along the red lines we have constructive interference and then on the green lines we have destructive interference. Going back to the composite diagram, if we drew a line across it, like a screen, and then looked along that line or screen, there'd be places on it where there would be waves and places on it where there would be none. As we said before, we could produce this kind of pattern rather than using two dippers by using two gaps in a barrier and pushing waves continuously at them. We're going to try and do something like this, except with light. Using a bright red laser, we're shining it at two gaps in a black slide. So the setup is going to be something like this. We have an intense beam of red light those two gaps are very close together, they're only a millimetre apart, and the light from them is being aimed towards the screen a couple of metres away, well, 1.75 metres away in this case. Now, if light is made up of waves, then from these gaps in the barrier, we should have two sets of semicircular pattern waves. And from those two sets, we'd expect there to be overlap, to be interference, and those then to produce an interference pattern. And though it's faint and indistinct, that is what we can see on the screen on the far side of the room. We see patches of red light caused by such an interference pattern. Now this was an extremely important experiment. It was originally performed by a man called Young. That light had wave-like properties because there was no other way to explain this interference pattern. 
Furthermore, by examining those fringes and taking measurements on the whole of the equipment used as well as the spacing between these fringes, which you can get from a piece of graph paper fairly easily, the wavelength of the light can be calculated. Thank you for watching.